All right, let's talk about heart failure. When I'm talking about heart failure, I'm talking about the heart as an organ is not able to pump as effectively as it should. This is called decreased cardiac output. And what that means is with each pump, it's not releasing the same amount of blood with each pump. It's a decreased amount. And what this does is it, it results in less effective pumps and it can result in blood being backed up into the heart and into the body and into the lungs. So there, the heart has two sides, the right side and the left side. It's a little bit of anatomy and physiology. The, the used up blood in the body goes to the right side of the heart where it's then pumped to the lungs returns to the left side of the heart, and then it goes to the body. So if it's stuck on the right side, uh, and the right side isn't pumping very well, then fluid backs up to the body, which is right before the right side. It's not able to get to the right side. Um, if you have left side of heart failure, you can't get rid of the blood in the left side of the heart, so it backs up to what's right before the left side, which is the lungs. However, the lungs aren't able to ex hold very much swelling, so then that backs up into the right side of the heart and then the right side and then the rest of the body. So, the left sided heart failure can lead to right sided heart failure. What are some other risk factors for right sided heart failure? If you have a heart attack on the right side of the heart, or you have valves that are not working on the right side of the heart, or you have tension. <laughs> left sided, if you have a left sided heart attack, left sided valve disorders, or hypertension. So let's talk a little bit of difference between signs and symptoms. On the right side, it backs up to the body, so you'll have peripheral edema and ascites, which is fluid around the abdomen and in the extremities. You'll also have jugular vein distension because it's backing up into those veins, uh, increased weight from all that hold, holding on to fluid. Uh, you can see you know, changes in blood pressure uh, on both sides, uh, left or right side. The, heart, the, the blood pressure is either going to go up because you have too much fluids, or if the heart is damaged enough, and the cardiac output isn't well enough, you'll see the blood pressure drop because it is not able to push and give that pressure to the blood. So right-sided is systemic edema, whereas left-sided backs up into the lungs first, leads to pulmonary edema. Or, or uh, not, not Pulmonary edema is a, is a, a critical state, but you still have left-sided uh, leads to plural fluid backup and congestion. So you'll have shortness of breath, crackles, and when they have, they'll have a dry cough with frothy sputum. They're not going to have a decreased oxygen saturation. They may need oxygen, and they're going to have an increased respiratory rate. You'll also notice an S3 gallop da -da 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 with left-sided heart failure. So diagnosis for heart failure, there's a lab called a BNP, which tells you if the heart is experiencing stretching from too much fluids. And if it's elevated over 100, then it's a sign of heart failure. At that point, they can also do an echocardiogram, which is like an ultrasound over the heart to see how much blood is being expelled. And there's something called a TEE, a transesophageal echocardiogram. Transesophageal, they'll go through the esophagus and they do the echocardiogram inside of the chest so they get a better picture. But they can also do an EKG and check cardiac enzymes to see if there was a heart attack that led to the heart failure. Treatment for these patients, well, they have a lot of fluid backed up in them. So you want to get daily weights to see how their fluid balance is doing. These patients, uh, you want to have them high filers position with some O2 so they're getting good oxygenation. You want to decrease their fluids and give them sodium restriction so they're not holding, getting more fluids in their body and holding on to more fluids. You want to give them diuretics to help uh, urinate out extra fluids. Uh, and then there's three other medicines you can use. Afterload reducers such as ACE inhibitors, um, ARBs, and calcium channel blockers will decrease uh, the resistance to the blood pressure and help to allow the blood flow. Inotropics such as digoxin will help the heart to be more effective with each push. And beta blockers can also help the heart to, to work more effectively. If uh, These typically uh, should do the job, but if not, patients may need some assistance with surgery via heart transplant or they may need an assistive device to actually help the heart, like a, like a heart balloon pump. That will actually help the heart to pump more effectively. If you have any more questions about ACE inhibitors, ARBs, calcium channel blockers, uh, beta blockers, or diuretics, I have another video, uh, and it's over hypertension and hypertensive meds, and give that a look. And that is heart failure.